people. Uh, we ever since last time we started talking to new people who don't know about our business. Uh, the learning point we had was uh, we were able to know what we can do next. Uh, today morning when I was talking to one of the ladies, she has a, a boutique. She completely did not know how to run the business, so we, I sat with my team again, we had to come up with something that we can start with people who are already running businesses, to a model which will only handle finances, because she was completely lost about the entire model of her own business. So what we have decided, we will move ahead to bring in uh, new models that can help these upcoming businesses. Uh, changing the, the, the business model canvas, yes, I'm heading there by Friday, everything will be power. Hello. Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Osenjan Bohan. Since Monday, the last time we were here, mm -hmm. I've been really, really caught up when things here and there. And I didn't really have the time to interview any other person, any client. But of course, we are putting much more emphasis, as I've always said in our previous sessions, in developing our digital layout system to make it better and much more efficient so that we can serve our family better. And uh, our business model canvas has still remained the same. Okay. It's not changing, but rather these sessions are helping us to make it much more better and uh, we can be able to pitch it better to potential <coughs> investors or people that are willing to give us some grants to support this model that much. And then looking forward, I think I'll be working more on the fish deck for Friday. Today and tomorrow, so I will be taking advantage of the office hours to maybe find better. Good evening. Good evening. I go Ben Manuel, Lion Events. I talked to two people, they came to me. Um, one came yesterday, one was this morning. It was general chat, and I kept on picking their mind what they expect out of my services. Um, at the end of it, at the end of the discussions, I got the deals. One is for next Saturday, next Saturday, Saturday after this one, and one is in a more future date. Um, I, I've been paying attention and, and trying to uh, exercise and practice a few steps that we've learned here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm so thankful. I would say this few weeks here has opened my mind to see my business and approach it in a different direction. Um, about uh, changing the business can uh, model canvas, uh, obviously I'm going to, the way I see, I'm going to handle bits and uh, cut down some assumptions and uh, see how to strengthen and focus so that uh, you can By <laughs> 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 chance, I bumped into a potential partner, mm -hmm. filmmakers, mm -hmm. whom I interviewed, and they also interviewed me the other way around. And I discovered that I have to add something to my business model comfort that is documentation documentation and production of short films or even the other, 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 other pictures for entertainment. Uh, the second partner I met with this morning and he gave me business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Richard. I managed to talk to Two farmers, and they made me to understand some things much better. Uh, one of them emphasized the aspect of creating awareness of my product. Because uh, most of 
most of the new people I engage are from referrals. So when they see the product out there, they start looking for me. So I, they, I got to understand that I need to create awareness of the product. The product is right, but some people are not aware. It actually exists. And then um, the second one was about offering support. Those who have forgotten, my main product is vegetable seedlings. So when I sell the seedlings, the aspect of following up on how the seedling is going to be managed in the main garden until the time of maturity is also very key. One of the farmers actually opened my eyes. Instead of me targeting commercial farmers, actually someone who starts with the kitchen garden, I can make that person become a commercial farmer. So someone can come and pick a few siblings, but if I take this person through the management until harvest and seal the drug, then they get inspired to scale up, which also widens my business space. So those are two things that I really learned, and uh, yeah, it is helping me improve on my business in the campus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I interviewed one person yesterday. 
and uh, the person said that uh, he has been hearing about us. But every time he passes, because we are behind uh, a place like this where people not normally come and watch football, he said he normally gets my place closed, which is true. Because I'm um, in the process of recruiting someone. I, uh, so he said that is a big challenge for you know, a business like mine. It needs to be open. People can come and maybe get something that they want. So I saw that I really need to act on it so fast so that uh, uh, the place is open. I remember when it was time for my interview, uh, Mr. Jared and uh, Mr. Cooper reached fast and found my place was closed. So it's something that I need to fix, uh, maybe to get more clients. About the business model campus, yes, I've learned a lot. I, I, see, I see myself in a better position. Uh, I think given given the time that after these training sessions, I'm going to do a lot. Getting someone there and the rest of the things where I had look for, uh, I think it's going to be okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't trust specifically. Uh, uh, I managed to interact with Shantaku clients. <coughs> and this why I was one of my classmates here. So yeah, we've been hearing about the food crops and seen that one of one of the things is the location bit of it. They really need to know where and how best they can easily access like a shop where they can easily access then and I'm giving them options, but you know, each and every has a variety of choices whenever it comes to quality or the product. <coughs> so I'm going to sit down and re re work on that one. Yeah. And that's one challenging thing I've been facing with using my plans about the, the bit of the location where I particularly locate my products, which I've learned a lot. And then, basing on the changes, yeah, I look. I have things that I need, really need to change out from the business on your canvas so as to see that I'm on track with my activities or my business. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Yanko Otna. I work for Fred and Sefer LinkedIn. This time only I interviewed one person and that person was the supplier so my focus was I wanted to understand the criteria they use to give people uh, inputs on credit and then they sell pay back so what I learned from them is they needed clear record on all the business operations and also they want people to be willing to sell more of their products and keep records, that's what they learned. Changing the business model, I'm in the process of changing some of the things. Uh, yeah, that is it. Thank you. Um, it's very important to Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I happen to be uh, as interviewed many people, but actually, Throughout, we were seated with my colleague from Yay, who is the BB Salt Yay, and uh, we were discussing a bank and so actually. And uh, I was trying to ask her, it was like we interviewing each other because they are doing similar things in Yay as well as us, though we are more advanced than them. We might be advanced in agriculture, but we are. I like one. I like that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so um, I was just trying to find out from her how does she see what we do. Are there some things that we're missing out that would put me as bring salt to light or bring salt to be known? Maybe is there a way we have more effort needed somewhere or are there other things that you needed to be brought in? So she was trying to discuss and say, I think maybe the issue could be with the exposure. Uh, yeah, so sometimes you find that um, exposure helps you to grow the business faster. The number of people who know about your business and the 
number of people who can do referrals for you is very important. For example, you can use, you can use maybe a, a roll-on method where one person who knows about your business goes to tell others. Or you sometimes go to, uh, to these people yourself one on one, one on one. Like for example, many of us give up easily. If we have gone to one person today and has not picked an idea very well, we give up. We don't want to go to this person again. But sometimes if you really want to get something from someone, it is good to frequent that person's place to get the idea. Sometimes learning is a continuous process. You can't do it at once. So I think that will help us actually to change our business model canvas. Because we are not moving enough from the discussion that I had today. So there's a lot more that we will do to actually create this business to be a bigger one, on which we have not yet realized. We don't know the new point yet, but as we continue, I believe, we'll be able to fill these gaps together. Thank you. Thank you. Yesterday, I had a chance, uh, an opportunity of interviewing only one person, and uh, that was the border border cyclist, Welshan Kareb. So as we are moving, the interview was ongoing. I asked him a question. I said, where do you normally go for your medical checkups or for your medical maybe treatment, like when you fall sick? And then he told me, I go to a nearby clinic. I told, I asked him again, how's been your experience? And then he told me, at times uh, when I go to the clinic, I find there are those who are good, some are not good in terms of service delivery. So at times when he goes and finds the right person, he gets up very well, but when that very person is not there, he's not served like actually he does expect. Then uh, I asked him one more question. What do you think that person should do so as to change? He says, uh, I think it is important that whoever owns that clinic, mentors, those who are there, the workers or the employees, do exactly what he does. So what I learned from him is that uh, we must be very consistent with uh, the good deeds that we're doing, all the service provision that we are actually offering, so that even if you're not around, other teammates, all those who are your employees can still do the same thing. So consistency in offering the best services, I think, is what I want. Thank you. Thank you. She's the master, of course. Hi. So, uh, in line with my business, I spoke to a group of clients.
individual consumers of honey because we have people who buy it for the day. Uh, but the individual consumers are complaining of access. In a few money, and unless if someone wanted to be today, they have to wait until the one day to travel to follow the day. So we are now thinking how do we develop a tailor? Because in Kampala we have people who retail our honey. So we are now looking at how do we turn some of those individual consumers into a retailer so that our customers are able to still access this honey in the other parts of the world, in the country, where we are still unable to access issues. So definitely that's a change for our business model. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, how many people have I interviewed? Really, uh, I have not interviewed uh, any more people yesterday and today I've been really busy. Hold up, but I have a plan for the weekend and most of my target customers actually are always free in the weekend, so I prefer to do it that way. But I intend to really, really do it intensively and I, and I get to understand what I'm working on. But then again, uh, while you seated there, I thought maybe I could collect a few feedback from you. Any of you who has used it, you've already told me you clicked, but you didn't get it. Sure. I clicked to five hundred. Okay. <laughs> if you have any challenges, really, you can get me and then you can help. Did you have data? Wi-Fi, <laughs> Wi-Fi, yes. So you guys, you come and you is also in four times. If I just to go to the No, my app is simple to use and registration is really as simple as if you have a Gmail account. In one minute. One step and then you're in it. Yes, please. I use your amazing app. I think the feedback I can give you that you should create a, I don't know, like a, an official line that some people who can't access internet sometimes, they can still hold that. So that you have more channels of making that. Like sometimes I don't have internet, so my smartphone has shut down, but I'm hungry. So I should be able to call just the line. And Becky wants to call the secretary handling. Actually, but not all discussing. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> Actually, I want to concur with what they are saying. Uh, I've been working with dog again. I think you will. I'm um, very well covered. Uh, in our app, we, we don't really get a lot of experience. We had an uh, issue like that people would love to form to make their orders. So, what you're saying is basically true. If you can help that, so that maybe people who don't have food, they may have smartphones. Sometimes you don't have that. can still just access your service door. Thank you. That's important. Excellent. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Thomas Kagame. I'm your host, Rahalon. Talk to a number of people, but as far as changing the business model counters, so that's why I'm just going to think that I've changed uh, the new information I got. I got clients who are interested in uh, giving loans in the form of assets. Uh, some of the clients who are the informal sector, which is largely unbanked, can access uh, capital to buy things like motorbikes. So one of them told me it would be amazing if the company can buy bikes and give to them, and then they pay to install it. And that was amazing, it was a brilliant idea. Uh, we, we are dealing with a huge like Sector, the informal sector, which is hugely unbanked. That was one. Uh, another one was to uh, increase our, our online presence. We have uh, clients who, are, who, don't, who can't access our offices always. They need the 
services anytime. So some people in the towns, others are far from here. So they told us to design uh, structures which enable for them to get uh, services. Many cannot be in a uh, So uh, briefly, that's it. It's been amazing. I think uh, that's what I have to say. I'm still uh, engaged in mind. something for the customer and we figured out how we're different from the competition that's what makes you stand out that's what the basis of your value proposition and then the next lecture we went on to customer segments we talked about who is a customer so buyers users resellers distributors all of those people who are who have the money that want to give you money for whatever you're selling talked about customer segments it's that little piece of the market that you're initially going after it will eventually expand over the course of your business but uh, for right now really honing in on you know those one or two specific customer segments because that'll make your marketing and everything else much easier and then remember those terms TAM SAM and SOM or TM those are the same thing so your total available market that's everyone that everyone starts out uh, targeting which really not targeting everyone. You have the SAM, which is that smaller group, more local area, and then you have your SOM, which is that the chunk of people that you actually can target with your business, that, you know, 10% of the local population, or uh, women between the ages of 20 and 55, whatever you end up using as your target, say, your target market. Uh, then we went on to channels. Remember, channels is kind of the, how does the product reach your customers how do you how do you get the product to your customers so you have physical products things you can actually touch and hold and see in front of you versus the virtual products like, you know, websites apps things that you can't physically touch but you can still pay money for and utilize you have the different channel types you have direct channels indirect channels and then those hybrid channels which kind of incorporate both the direct and the indirect and then we talked about your different sales models so Either you've got the direct sales where you're in charge of the sales team and it's just your product being sold, so you've got total control, but you've got a lot more risk versus the distributor sales where you've offloaded a lot of the risk onto a distributor, but if that distributor finds a partner they like a lot better, you're just kind of out of luck. There it is. So customer relationships. So this was that sales funnel, if everyone remembers. Um, the version for physical products where you've got more of those steps be between when they realize your business exists to the point that you've actually gotten them to come up, put a product next to the cash register and actually hand you money for that product. You get into the keep part of it where 
you've got them as a customer, so you want to keep them around. You want to give them reasons to come back to your store time and time again. And then the grow customer segment of the funnel, uh, where you're trying to sell that same customer uh, more products from your product line or more expensive products from your product line, that sort of thing. So remember that get, keep, grow. Then we went on to talk about money, the revenue streams and cost structure boxes. So remember it's your revenue, that's your money coming in, your costs, that's your money going out. And keeping track of those two things to make sure you've got more money coming in than you have money going out is probably the most important thing about record keeping in your business. And so you can figure out these things, your CAC, your customer acquisition cost, your lifetime value, your LTV, and then the churn. And hopefully your churn is as low as possible, hopefully your CAC is as low as possible, and you get that LTV up as high as you possibly can over the course of your business. And then we get into the last three boxes, the key activities, partners, and resources. So the differences between these, the key activities, that's the stuff you have to do in order to get your business model to actually work. The key partners, those are self-explanatory, the suppliers, the partnerships you have to have in order for your business model to work. And then those key resources, those are those things that your company has to have in order for your business model to work. So the things that you're renting, the things that you bought and you own for your business, uh, the people who work for you, and that sort of thing. And that's it. We've done everything. So now is the time where we can ta start talking about those PowerPoint presentations that you're all going to get up and do wonderfully presenting. All right. So let's go through the uh, let's go through what I suggest is in your presentations. This is not a requirement that all these things are in your presentation. It's just a good way to get across, especially if you end up presenting to. An NGO or an investor or that sort of thing. What sort of stuff should be in a, in a PowerPoint presentation uh, if you're in that situation? But um, so this is a suggestion. You want to play? You want to talk? Kind of tell your story? You want to have a lot of photos in your presentation? That's fine too. But this is the basic number of slides. There's 13 of them that really get across everything you've learned these last three weeks and really encompasses your entire business. So you start with a slide with your logo, company name, whatever you want to have on there. Another slide that then has your problem statement. So what problem is your business solving? And then that value proposition statement that we spent so much time on that first week. That's slide three. Your solution, how you're solving the problem. You go on slide four. The market opportunity, so that's that TAM, SAM, SOM, that goes on slide five. Channels on slide six. Customer relationships, slide seven. Uh, your revenue streams and cost structures, so your, your basic money. I'm not looking for exact numbers with any of these things, but just kind of how money's coming in, how money is going out. Your competitive analysis on slide nine. Your timeline, so that's what you'd like to do in the next three to six months. So you can talk about what you've done, maybe what you've done in the last six months, what you're going to do in the next six months. Your ask, so that's something, especially because these are going to be recorded, and um, you can have American investors, uh, investors elsewhere around the world see this thing. So not only are you not only requesting certain things from maybe people in the audience, live audience on Friday, but also think about you know, if you get some Americans involved, what would you ask them for support for your business? I always like to have a slide in there with um, a picture of your team, or you know, if you can't get a full picture of your team, maybe individual pictures of the people who help make your business go. And then your last slide always has your contact information so that people can get in touch with you after the presentation. So we're going to go through these one by one. Awesome. So, like I said, the first slide, company name. Just something to identify you and your company at that beginning of the presentation. Um, I don't usually put the contact information in the beginning. I usually save that until the end. So just your logo, your company name, whatever you want to have on that first slide. 
and then problem. Tell us the story. Tell us the reason, you know, the reason your business exists is because you're trying to solve a problem. So talk about the pains that you're eliminating, the gains that you're providing from your value proposition campus. And this is really how you do that story. That's how you capture the attention of the audience. So then your value proposition, you're telling how you're kind of solving that problem, the reason your business exists, that one sentence. Um, it's from your value proposition's ad lib statement sheet. Um, talk about how you're removing pain or increasing gain in that value proposition statement. But don't talk about your competition just yet. Then you get into your solution. This is where you can, you can talk about what you sell, you can talk about what you've developed, that sort of thing. It's always nice to have pictures. So, especially folks in agriculture, if you've got pictures of what you're doing, um, really anyone, if you've got any merchandise, it's neat to have pictures of that. Uh, if you have a tech product, um, so you know, an app, you show mockups of your app or screenshots of the app since it's already developed. Um, I'm going to advise against any sort of live demo <laughs> of your app because something. <clears throat> Those if it bullies. can go wrong, it will go wrong. So <laughs> pictures are good here. Um, if you have physical products, bring them. Show them to the audience. I know a number of you have physical products. You really should bring them with you um, and show them off to the audience. Market opportunities. Like I said, this is your TAM, SAM, and Morgan Market, SOM. Um, the best way to display it is that, you know, that three circles like you have in your course outline, if you're able to do that. And I'm, again, I'm not looking for exact numbers. I'm just looking for, you know, biggest, your TAM is your biggest group, and your SOM is your smallest group with your SAM, something in the middle. Yes. Uh, just adding on that, why this is important, you say you, you are, uh, you are uh, pitching to an investor. They want to know before they invest in your business that you are working in a market that has the potential to grow in the market that if they invest their money there's enough opportunity or enough time for the money that they put in to actually come back and so that's why we went through that we need to know what is the size of the market that you're working in what's the size of the opportunity so then your channels how are you going to reach your customers um, you can pull it directly from, you can keep track of all this stuff under the smart canvas. Just put that right on the slide. So, tell us whether you're a direct or an indirect or a hybrid channel. If you've got a physical product or a virtual product. Um, and then maybe what kind of sales strategy you're using. Are you doing direct sales? Or have you decided to go with the distributor? So, this is where you talk about your different channels. There we go. Customer relationships, it's your funnel. So tell us about how you're getting customers, how you're keeping customers, and how you're growing your customer base. Uh, make sure uh, if you have the numbers, first CAC, LTV, and your customer churn, we can put those here. If you don't have those numbers, that's okay, but just talk about how you're aware of it, how you're getting that information now. Um, you can also discuss how you plan to get customers into the funnel. How, you know, if you're going to do some uh, free uh, marketing, if you're going to use some paid marketing. So you remember those, those different free things that you could do to get people in the funnel, the different paid options. So go back and uh, tell us about what you're going to do there. And then your money slide, your revenue streams and cost structure. Again, it's okay if you don't include numbers. We just really want to know if you know what your revenue streams are, what your different revenue streams are, and what your different costs are. If you've got those fixed costs, if you've got variable costs, just let us know so we have an idea of, of, of what your business, kind of what's going on under the hood there. So um, if you have exact numbers, you're more than welcome to use those. Um, or if you have estimates of maybe what you think you're gonna get to in the next few years, kind of based off of what you've done so far, you can do that as well. Um, however you want to set that up, that's fine. I know a lot of startup uh, presentations have a graph with two lines where they have <coughs> the revenue and it's going really fast and they've got the costs that are going up a little bit slower. Um, but it's however you want. 
Um, if you want to do financial projections, they're just educated guesses, and everyone knows these guesses. Unless you possibly see in the future, which I cannot, so it's okay. We know it's guesses. Then your competitive analysis. So this is really understanding the totality of your market. It's really understanding that yes, there are other businesses that are doing what I'm doing, but this is how my business is differentiating itself and is an improvement over all these others. So you find, I would suggest three or four other businesses that do something similar to you and then figure out maybe three or four categories that those other businesses that you do, but those other businesses don't do all of those three or four categories. And so you can set up a table with their names, your name at the top and check marks across because you're doing all of the things. But then you have your two or three competitors. And maybe they're doing one of the things, or two of the things, or three of the things, but not all four. So, so you can also do two by two boxes. Um, you know, there are these these things where you have the you have the vertical and horizontal axis. And sometimes your company is doing everything really well, and your competitors are doing other things not so well. So um, it's however you want to present these things um, during the presentation. So timeline, like I said, um, just talk about what you've done so far. Talk about what um, what your plans are, maybe for the next few months to expand your business. If you're expanding to new markets, uh, if you're planning to hire, that sort of thing. Um, usually, you have kind of a you have a horizontal line of maybe three to five different points on the timeline. That's usually the way that uh, that works really well. So you're asked, what would you like your audience to do? Do you want them to go to your website? Do you want them to subscribe to your mailing list? Do you have a Facebook page or a Twitter feed or that sort of thing? So have them, uh, whatever you want the audience to do. And then uh, if you have a website, this is where you can direct people to your website. If you uh, want to collect email addresses to follow up with customer discovery or phone numbers or that sort of thing. That is what you do here. So that's your ask. And then re remember, like I said, the um, the American audience that's going to be watching this um, might be interested in investing. So if you're looking for investment money, definitely talk about that here uh, during the ask. And when you're asking for investment money, you also have to be clear what you're going to use that money to do. Right, right. That's... And so, like I said, you're oh, going to go back. Yep. Your team. So a picture of you and the rest of your team uh, with your names. Uh, this is where you put that. Because you want to, you know, some operations are just one person and that's fine. So you can just talk about, you know, maybe how you got into it if you're a one person operation. Otherwise, you're going to have other people involved. So this is where you can talk about how your team has helped you get where you are today. Um, so you can put qualifications on there, uh, titles, like, if, you know, if one person is the CEO, and the, the other person is, uh, you know, the head of marketing or the head of sales, this is where you put those sort of things. Uh, just so the, the folks that are in the audience can understand you know, how your business came together. And then your closing slide, this is where you have your contact information because you want people to follow up with you after this presentation. So um, you can include your logo and your company name on this slide as well. Uh, just copy and paste that from the first slide, but the only addition is to have your uh, contact information on there as well. So yeah, so those are the 13 slides. Again, this is a suggestion. You don't have to have all of these things, but um, this is what people tend to have in their PowerPoint presentations back in the U.S. So, demo day. It's going to be seven minutes maximum. We are going to cut you off at seven minutes. Because if we don't cut you off in seven minutes, demo day is going to go on for six hours, and nobody wants that. Uh, we're going to film all the presentations. They're going to be put together in a demo day video for an American slash international audience. Um, I'll be doing that when I get back to the U.S. Um, the presentations are also going to be separated into their own video packages. Um, you know, that's the reason I'm having all of you go through and do interviews, so we can put all these things together into neat little videos that I can send you all the links to. And uh, I'll have those done probably late September, early October, if all goes as planned. 
itself. Your last homework assignment is to continue your customer discovery, but also build that slide deck, build that PowerPoint presentation in the next two days. So if you haven't started, now is the time to start. Um, if you want to practice your presentation, we'll be around tomorrow for office hours. So any questions? This is the last slide of the slides I have. So any questions? Coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, if you want anyone to look at your presentation, uh, drop by tomorrow. Uh, if you don't have a computer with PowerPoint on it, Google Slides works on your phone. So that is an option. Because um, I know some people may not have computers. So that is an option. There works on both uh, Android and iOS. So um, if you need help with that stuff, just let me know.